Let's begin. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the Medical Marijuana and Wellness webinar series. Uh, tonight's topic is one that I'm sure is near and dear to many people's hearts, which is sleep, insomnia, and medical marijuana. Uh, I know that a lot of people have problems with sleep, or you know of people who have problems with sleep, and it's something that um, without a good night's sleep, it's really hard for your body to function. And so this is kind of one of those uh, pillar, what I call pillar um, webinars, ones that are very important for just you as a person, and also basically can help change your life. Um, we, we put on these webinar series because um, in doing the webinars for the last four and a half years, I've heard people come and say, you, you, you've given me, given me my life back, or I got my life back. And really what we're trying to do tonight is if we can help just one person watch this webinar series, watch this webinar, and have them get their life back, then we'll have been successful. So thank you again for joining us. Um, I've got some great speakers tonight, and I just want to introduce them. I'm going to start off by introducing uh, Randy Jelks, who is with TrueLeave. Uh, Randy, you've been with Truly for a while and you've helped a lot of patients. Tell us a little, little bit about who you are and what you do. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mark. So my name is Randy Jelks and I am with Truly. I'm one of the community educators. I actually go out into the community and spread cannabis awareness. Um, I've been with the company for about four years now and um, love every day of it. Um, but education is key that I've understood throughout um, this position and helping out patients. And we all think that we know a lot about cannabis that when we first start out, if we're um, users of cannabis or brand new, we might still think we know it all, but um, there's always much to be learned. So that's my I think as an industry, you know, we, um, we, 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 we all know something about cannabis, but we really, even as a scientist, we have, and I'm a practitioner, we've just scratched the surface as what we know about it and what it can do for us, which is, which is I think, um, good news and bad news. Good news is where you have a lot more to go and we can discover to help ourselves. Bad news is why have we not been studying it for so many years? And I'm not going to get into the politics and all that stuff, but it's something that we need to really think about and, and fix. Um, but I'd like to also introduce a gentleman who um, I've had a chance to do a webinar, webinars with before, and someone who I think knows sleep probably better than anybody I know, and that's Dr. Greg Holt. And Dr. Holt, you are currently with um, uh, uh, the uh, with the American Board of uh, Sleep Medicine. Is that correct? No, no, that was just where I picked up the um, uh, the board certification for his clinical sleep specialist. Oh, okay. Anyway, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Because you've been around uh, sleep studying for a long time. Oh, yeah. I was um, boarded in sleep in 2005, uh, ran a sleep medicine clinic for a while. I uh, was a professor for a long time teaching physiology, uh, LSU Med Center, uh, University of Texas, uh, San Antonio, just a, um, a lot of different places, Temple University Hospital. But right now, we I work with a company that works with the ALS population. So we do mm -hmm. mechanical ventilation for the ALS patients uh, in, uh, in the Houston area. Mm -hmm. And uh, really nice. And, and currently president of the Texas Society of Sleep Professionals as well. So that's why I, that, that list is up there. Sure. Well, good. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so let's, I'm going to bring up a presentation. Let's get into, let's, let's bring up and let's get into sleep because I think that's something that Again, it all near and dear to all of our hearts and something I think we really need to, to pay attention to. So let's pull this up here. Um, make sure I got the right one. So have we got this, have we got the right slide? I hope. There we go. Good. So, Randy and Greg, um, I just want to let everybody and, and everybody who's attending, this is part of the Medical Marijuana and Wellness webinar series. Uh, tonight's topic is sleep, insomnia, and medical marijuana. Uh, we have actually four more webinars uh, left in the series for this summer. Uh, that's into routes of administration, migraines, cannabinoids, and terpenes. So we're trying to do as much as we can to educate people on and patients on cannabis and really take a lot of the mystery out of it so that they're feeling comfortable about using it and actually they can use it to their, their maximum advantage. I do wanna point out that this is a webinar. It's made for information purposes only. We're not trying to hand out any medical advice. If you wanna get medical advice, please consult uh, your, 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 your doctor. But we are here to really try to help guide you and also to be able to answer your questions. And then the other thing I wanted to point out is tonight's uh, webinar is being, live is being live streamed on Facebook. 
So if you have some friends that want to pick it up there, you can be able to do that as well. Um, a few housekeeping things that I always like to cover. If you look kind of down over here, you'll see a couple of double bubbles um, that say Q&A. Please feel free to ask us questions. We're here to get answer your questions. And what we want to do is be able to get as many of those answered as possible. We, find, we kind of track the Q&A buttons and, and, and the questions that are there. Some people will go over here and click on the chat button. Um, you can do that. Uh, we will kind of, we have moderators that will moderate that and we may, we may pick it up. But for sure, if you have a question that wants to get answered, please use the Q&A button. And I also want to point out that as a follow-up to this webinar, uh, you'll get a copy of the Visio presentation. It's going to be, you'll get an email, excuse me, you'll get an email. In that email will be a link to the presentation. It'll be uh, a link to a YouTube uh, video. Also, you'll get a copy of the presentation in uh, flipbook format, a link to that as well. And then also information on the sponsor discounts and also speaker information. So you should be getting that probably um, by the end of day Friday or maybe early Monday. I do wanna point out that we did have had some problems in the past just getting them out in time. A lot of that has to do with making some changes to our back end. When you Sometimes when you wanna streamline in the technology business, you don't streamline. <laughs> so um, welcome to technology. But you should be able to get, we should be getting this out on time. And if you have any problem with that, please send me an email at event at marijuanaaware.com. And we'll put that in the chat so you have that email address in case you need to reach us. So let's get on and let's talk about sleep. Um, what are we going to try to accomplish tonight? Well, I think we have some objectives. One of them is we do want to cover what is sleep and insomnia, because being able to set a baseline as to what they are helps us to be able to build the foundation of not only talking about them, but talking about what we can do to address the, any, any conditions related to that. We want to talk about if cannabis can help improve sleep, uh, and we can also see it when, and if it does, how does it do that? Uh, and then we want to talk about what cannabis cultivars or strains will help you with sleep and then any specific products that are out there. Uh, Randy, I'm sure you have some specific products you can help us with, so we'll be getting down into that. So those are, that's what we're going to be covering tonight, and I hope this answers a lot of your questions, and hopefully, again, if there's something that's particular to you, let us know. Um, Dr. Dr. Holt, um, insomnia, tell me about it. Some people experience it, and of course, it gets to a point where it needs to be treated, so tell me a little bit about this. Sure, sure. It's it's the most prevalent sleeping disorder when you take a look at all of the different sleeping disorders. It can affect more than 64 million Americans each year. And, you know, if women have more insomnia than men, sometimes it's related to like uh, different things that, uh, that affect them than it, than it does men, including hormonal changes and things like that. There's sometimes during menopause, there are things that uh, uh, cause insomnia in women that are very difficult to treat. Uh, sometimes, you know, the healthcare costs will go up. It's uh, more important and more relevant to the elderly population because of things that might um, be comorbid conditions like pain, medications can affect us sleep. And when you think about insomnia, you need to think about the different types of insomnia. You can have like a sleep onset insomnia where it's just difficult to fall asleep. And everybody thinks about that one primarily, but there's also wake after sleep onset insomnia where you wake up in the middle of the night and find, uh, find it difficult to get back to sleep. So there's different causes for that because sometimes things like that are related to the different sleep stages. So when you have insomnia, you try to figure out if it's something that will pass. If you took a nap during the day, then you don't have insomnia. Even if you're staying up till one o'clock in the morning, it's just that you, you fell asleep during the day. So that's like identifying the causative factors when you're looking at the right side of the screen. So you try to find out if you did something that could have caused that insomnia, but if it lasts more than two or three months, then it's time to really get it checked out and seek uh, medical attention. Sure. So related to that, we get into the question of then what is sleep? Because um, obviously insomnia is the lack of ability to sleep, but what is sleep? And more importantly, there are some conditions like pain and anxiety. There's some of the main reasons why people can't sleep. So Dr. Holt, tell us about this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when, when people think of, of sleep, they think of, you know, some of the mm -hmm. philosophical things, you know, it's like, a, you could say it's the opposite of wake, yay, but it's also like the idea of a, a transient loss of consciousness. But, you know, you, you can't say loss of consciousness is sleep, even though you are unconscious because loss of conscious in a medical term is pathologic and sleep is definitely not pathologic. 
there's a lot of things that can affect sleep, but it's that restorative kind of nature of sleep that affects just about every living thing to where there's like an upswing when there's more activity, even cellular activity. And then there's the downside of it to where there's a resetting of all of the neurons and all the cells in the body. And it's that kind of restoration that we, we do need sleep. When you think of a third of your life is spent sleeping, it's, a, it's an important aspect of life. Sure. And, you know, and you and I chatted about this in the practice session. You know, why do we sleep? I think that's really important. Why, why is our body prone to sleep? Um, tell us how important it is for us. You know, it's a, the interesting part about it is like a, when you do like all kinds of motor functions, even if you're sitting still and thinking, you know, there's activity going on. But if you are moving and exercising and doing stuff in the normal daily activities, there's a, a, a burning of this ATP these little uh, molecules of like uh, energy. And so when it breaks down to adenosine, that adenosine concentration builds up inside the body. And that's what they think that's one of the things that signals the need for sleep is ATP is broken down, energy is being utilized from things like muscle movement, uh, moving uh, molecules like glucose across cell membranes. Adenosine builds up and it has to be like, um, stored away, converted, put back into the cycle. So that's what sleep is thought to be for, is like if some things build up, there has to be a downtime to it. So there's important influence of sleep on things like, uh, like you know, uh, the immune system function and uh, everything else that we do. So it's a, a big factor for living. Yeah. And it has a lot to do with, it has a lot to do with helping us grow and heal as that last point comes out. But uh, absolutely. There, there's, there's, there's a lot of, when you talk about the duration of sleep and the quality, it's directly related to your health. I know that obviously they talk about uh, one of the ways to break people down is sleep deprivation. Um, we, we, we heard about that. So tell us a little bit about sleep duration and quality. You know, um, yeah, that's true. They use it as a form of like torture to really wear somebody out is sleep deprivation. And sleep deprivation can be self-imposed. Uh, when you think of teenagers, high school students that that don't get enough sleep, they think they have enough. But when, when you lose sleep, something that can happen initially is that feeling of fatigue. And fatigue is different than sleepiness. Sleepiness can occur when there's a loss of total sleep time, but fatigue is the initial stages of something that you feel as sleep is being affected. And that could be by like kids, animals jumping on the bed. It could be the trash truck outside um, backing up. All of those little things can cause arousals that we can see on EEG, on your brainwave activity, that lead to these uh, the feeling of fatigue. It's, it, it's, it's a big problem. So when you add things like these disease states over here, uh, when you look at it, sometimes you don't know which comes first uh, when sleep and um, sleep loss are affected by some of these different disease states like schizophrenia and stroke, especially depression is a big one. Yeah, and the anxiety also pits in there as well, which is which is really fascinating. Now, we also chatted a lot. What I was really fascinated by this slide that really, there, it, based on your age, the number of hours that you sleep is really important. Yeah, when you when you think of this slide, it's, they, you can see the ranges that they put down, and you can see the ranges in the hours and the ranges in the ages. So the idea is that there are short sleepers and there are long sleepers. But what they found out is that if you're sleeping less than four hours a day, a night, or if you're sleeping more than 12 hours a night, those two groups, those two populations are dying faster than the guys that are sleeping at about eight hours for an adult. So well, getting in between there is critical for an adult. And you mm -hmm. can see as you're like, uh, the younger you are, the more sleep you require. And that's an important fact too that you need to have that sleep for adjusting to what's going on in the world because you get a lot more deep sleep as an infant. And that's where a lot of that cognitive function comes into play. So you it goes have back to, to, that, uh -huh. back to that growth and healing thing. Yeah, absolutely. In deep sleep, that's where growth hormone is being released primarily. So that you've got to have that going on. So right. it's important as a parent, you know, when they are toddlers that they sometimes try to stay up as late as the parents, but that's called a limit setting disorder. And that's where the parents have to be parents. And, you know, and I've got five kids and I remember when they were all little and it is a battle sometimes to make sure that go to bed. I mean, it, get in bed, 
all of that's important. Even when they're teenagers, you have to pull away all of their electronic devices. And I'm right. still doing that. So right. yeah, it's a big deal. Right, right. Well, I, I know that uh, we talk about sleep and I'm, we're gonna get to the scientific part of it now. You know, this is an interesting thing where you match your, what they call your sleep pressure to your circadian phase. That's a lot of good words, Greg, what does this mean? Yeah, you know, um, sleep pressure is the easy one to figure out. So that's that S marked on the curve. You can see that pressure to fall asleep that co coincides with what we think is adenosine buildup inside the body. So as that sleep pressure builds up to a peak, it means that you're going to be sleepy and ready to get to sleep. Now, if you take a nap, that S curve is going to fall off early. And that's why, you know, your sleep onset may be delayed. But you see that that S curve is peak at the same time the circadian rhythm is on that downslope. Mm -hmm. And you have to be matched up with a, a peak in your sleep pressure coupled with the circadian rhythm to be in on the downslope to fall asleep naturally. If you mess with any one of these curves, then you, you can have like transient insomnia. And that's a big deal too, is to match those things up. But as long as you understand that if you took a nap, you're not gonna fall asleep at the same time, and you understand that you know you your circadian rhythm is really not some nebulous thing. It's genes making proteins and breaking down proteins during the day to signal wake state and sleep state. Mm -hmm. So all of that is sort of like coupled together, and it's got to happen together to fall asleep at the same time. Uh, and it's a big deal for everybody, but um, not a lot of people understand this. They feel like they would rather take a pill even for a transient insomnia when they knew they took a nap. And that's, that's not good either. So, right. so how do we sleep? Tell us about how, how we do that. I mean, every, we all do it, but I was fascinated on how we do it. Yeah, there's a, you can look at the mechanics of, of sleep and uh, you can, I mean, the best way to understand the mechanics of sleep is like, okay, somebody's laying still, they're comfortable, the room is comfortable. There can be some uh, a white noise, like a fan going or something like that, but it can't be organized sounds, uh, crickets chirping, uh, storm, rain, stuff like that. Some of that's uh, too organized to like fall asleep naturally. But if you're in the environment and you've got your sleep pressure built up and on the downslope of the circadian phase, the best way to understand sleep is through brainwave activity. So the neurons, They've all got like this uh, uh, magnetic field surrounding them. So these population of brain cells will, will have this magnetic field, electrical field that comes off of it that we can pick up and amplify off of the, the skin surface on the head. So that's the electroencephalogram, the EEG. So when you're looking at the EEG, those signals tell us without a doubt if you're sleepy, relaxed, and when you're asleep. So those are some things that you, you cannot fake. Uh, you, you can't tell me that you were asleep when I can see it and I can see what's going on. So there's some things that, that, that are interpreted as sleep onset that uh, everybody that works with sleep, sleep medicine uh, recognizes as being right. true. So yeah, I, th I think what you're referring to is uh, we, you, you, you supplied, you're kind enough to supply a little chart here uh, about sleep and you mentioned over here Here's your, here's your EMG. And you pointed so, out as this line to me yesterday, as this line gets thinner, it has a dramatic impact. Right, then that's an EMG, the uh, electromyogram. So they put those um, electrodes on the legs generally, and they look at muscle tone. So those thicker black lines on the left side of that EMG signal uh, are when uh, the patient is uh, asleep, but there's still muscle tone to the body. And in REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, that muscle tone will, will die off and signal that you've entered this uh, stage REM, rapid eye movement sleep where most dreaming takes place. So when you look at left eye, right eye, uh, you can see those phasic eye movements right there where the cursor is. There's a loss of muscle tone right after that phasic eye movement. And just in front of that uh, phasic eye movement, when you look down at the EEG signals, it looks like sawtooth waves. And those sawtooth waves uh, are, are really an indication of REM sleep because you don't need the phasic eye movements. You could have a, a tonic REM stage with no eye movements. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, you know, the muscle channel doesn't show it like a complete loss of muscle function, but you'll, you will see those sawtooth waves that can indicate rapid eye movement sleep. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen first. 
If you get into a dream state sleep initially after you close your eyes, that's pathologic. And, you know, it could be an indication of something like narcolepsy. Mm -hmm. Narcolepsy is one of those startling kind of things. Ha ha ha. And then you're, you're, uh, looks like you're unconscious and you're in stage REM. So yeah. REM happens about 90 minutes after you fall asleep and it cycles every hour and a half after you're asleep and starts out short, five minutes or so, and gets longer as the night goes on. So we remember our dreams primarily from the last thing that, you know, as we wake up, because that's where most dreaming takes place is in the last third of the night. Sure. So tell me about non-REM sleep. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, this is like the majority of the night is non-REM sleep. So we divide, um, when you look at a hypnogram, a hypnogram is like a, 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 uh, like a histogram of all night of sleep uh, based on the stages of sleep. So we've got stage wake, stage REM, and then we've got N1, N2, and N3 sleep. And it used to be stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four sleep, but they combined stage three and four into N3 sleep. So non-REM is one, two, and three. So when you lo look at like all of these different non-REM forms of sleep, they are sleep. And N3 sleep is the most restorative stages of sleep. That's where you have that slowing of brainwave activity where a lot of things can go on to, to reset the neurons. All those supporting cells inside the brain, like glia, astrocytes, they can sort of mop up some of those cell active substances have been released from the neurons and they they store those and they convert those back into something that the neurons can use after you know that that higher activity high frequency discharge has been going on during the day mm -hmm. i mean here's here's you talk about n1 n2 n3 um actually uh if you look at n3 there's two of them because it was n4 right Right, right. You know, so the N3 deep sleep was the old stage four. So they still call it N3 these days. Uh, and so when you're looking at N3, it depends on how many delta waves that you have. But, but the, the important part about it is, is, you know, first third of the night, restorative sleep. And when you are in stage three, uh, N3 sleep, it's difficult to arouse. That's where somebody can try to shake you and you're not waking up. And so they keep shaking you until you finally come around and uh, that can cause a confusional arousal. And it also can cause some combative behaviors because you don't know what's happening if somebody's waking you out of that very, very deep sleep. Mm -hmm. Also, some of the other parasomnias are grinding your teeth in um, stage three, four, bruxism. Somnambulism is sleepwalking uh, that can occur in deep sleep. And night terrors is different from a nightmare. A nightmare you remember it generally associated with the REM sleep, but a night terror occurs in deep sleep. And that's where uh, a patient, primarily uh, a pediatric patient, will scream to beat the band and then wake up and have no recollect recollection of it. Oh, so night terror is really not dangerous, but you know it's just uh, frightening to everybody else in the house. Oh, yeah. And here's some of your, uh, I, I love your science where you actually... Uh, track people and, and explain this to us because this has to do with N3. Yeah, when you when you look at it, see the tallest waves in the bottom tracing is C3 to A2. And that's sort of like a, um, on the bottom one there, Mark. Oh, right here, yeah. Yeah, see what those, those large amplitude waves just bleed through to the eye channels, but that's not true EEG on the top two waves. But those tallest amplitude waves are the delta waves that's an, uh, that shows that you are in deep sleep. So the density of those delta waves tells you if you're in like old stage three or old stage four. Mm -hmm. So right now, if you've got at least 20% of the 30 second page or epoch is gonna be delta waves, that's when you, you say that you're in N3 sleep. So remember that infants have a lot more of this than older people and deep sleep is important for cognitive activity too. The same as uh, REM sleep, but uh, deep sleep uh, in the journal Science, they came up with a study that showed that without deep sleep, you know, it's harder to learn new tasks. Mm -hmm. And as we get older, we lose a lot of this N3 sleep. Remember that old adage, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. It could be true because we lose deep sleep as we age and it is harder to like uh, learn new things that come on. But yeah, That's it's very fascinating. It's, That's very fascinating. Because I know when, when I was younger, I played uh, sports um, and uh, at a competitive level, especially in college. And um, 
man, the, the coaches were rabid about making sure you got enough sleep. It was just really interesting. And I did notice there was a difference when I got a good night's sleep on my performance versus not, not, not getting a good night's sleep. And it made a big difference. I think when you're, when you're playing a team sport like football, you can kind of mask it a little bit. But when I played golf, um, you know, you're by yourself. You either do well or you don't do well. And if you don't do well, everybody knows, everybody knows it. Um, yeah. So, you know, an interesting thing on that tracing, too, is uh, something we call alpha delta sleep. Mm -hmm. So we know what those tall waves are. But if you have a higher frequency in the middle of all that, that's an indication of chronic pain. So oh, chronic really? pain can be seen on EEG at night while you're asleep. So pain doesn't go away just because you're asleep. Pain is still being generated at those sites. And I see that evidence of like uh, alpha delta sleep or alpha intrusion uh, in cancer patients, people with um, like um, joint problems, arthritis, you'll see a lot of alpha delta sleep. So you have like a, a true objective measure mm -hmm. of pain rather than saying one to 10, how much pain you're in. If I look at somebody's EEG at night during sleep, I can tell if there's like evidence of chronic pain. Well, and it helps the pain management guys do a better job because they think, you know, they have to separate the drug seekers from the people that are in actual pain. So with a note from somebody like me saying, no, I see it. I've seen it. You know, it's there and send them a, a you know, a photocopy of a, a page of the, and point it out on the EEG. That means that there's evidence of chronic pain. In somebody. Sure. So this is an interesting one. When we do sleep, you know, when we do sleep, when we sleep, what are we really doing? You know, we talk about circadian rhythm, biological clocks. Talk, yeah. talk to me. You know, the, the, the neatest here is to look at, at that collection of neurons called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Uh, and that's where, you know, everybody's looking at that and saying, oh, okay, that's where melatonin can be released. And that's like a, a way station for setting the tone for being awake or being asleep. But you can't say that one spot is the only spot for which bodies of uh, collections of neurons inside the brain are more active or less active during which stage of sleep. But you can say that the suprachiasmatic nucleus is one of those because when it's right there, it receives input from the eyes. When you think about uh, direct sunlight or indirect sunlight, but bright sunlight shining on the eyes comes to the SCN and it shuts down melatonin production. And if you don't have that bright light to suggest that it's a wake state where you should be waking up a little more and more alert, it's only social input that comes from a different um, pathway uh, to the suprachiasmatic nucleus. So the social interactions, uh, hanging around somebody at the, you know, the coffee machine, that kind of interaction can also signal the wake state and shut down melatonin production. So you have two different pathways there to like um, say, okay, now I'm awake. But yeah. when you're asleep, there's like, 10, 15 different sites that are actually going to say that you're, uh, you're asleep and they suppress frontal lobe activity. So there's not much thought processing going on. <laughs> so there's um, uh, a dollar, yeah. Many, a couple of years ago, I should say, uh, I took my dad to uh, Alaska fishing for 14 years. My, he, he was a we love fishing. We used to go salmon halibut fishing. And one of the things we went to a place so far north that, um, really it, the sun never really went down. It kind of went over the, over the mountain a little bit, kind of got a dusky and then the sun came up. And I remember, especially the first couple of years I went up there, not expecting that uh, the first few days were really tough. I mean, we didn't know it was night day. We didn't know when to sleep, not sleep. It, you know, our bodies were kind of searching for what to do. Um, yeah, you're, you're really having a big influence on the circadian rhythm that is timed with sunlight primarily. Right. So they did a lot of studies on circadian phasing in a cave. And that's why they say, I think it's somewhere around here or someplace where it says, there we go, that follows a 24 hour cycle. It's not exactly 24 hours. Those guys in a cave found out that it was like 24 hours plus 20 minutes or something like that, that they found right. out, you know, the true phasing. And remember, circadian rhythms are uh, genes making proteins and breaking down proteins. So mm -hmm. a lot of it is like in there. And if you don't see the sunlight, those guys north of the Arctic Circle for a long period of time, they call it SAD, seasonal affective disorder, when you don't have that sunlight, you know, and you could get that in an office with like, a, you know, fluorescent lighting. But if you don't get direct sunlight, you can have that flat kind of affect 
Will you seem like you're depressed, but you say that there's nothing wrong with me. You just feel like something is out of sorts or something like that. But that's where you got to step out 20 minutes of bright indirect sunlight, no sunglasses in the morning, and then the first hour or so that you're awake, and then again late afternoon to cycle back up, you know, right. in that circadian rhythm so you can be on the downslope at like nine at nine o'clock, 10, 10 p.m. And I did notice that, uh, again, being a golfer, I spent some time in Scotland where, you know, in the summertime, we could go out and play golf at five o'clock at night and the sun didn't go down until 10 or 11 o'clock. In the wintertime, when you went down there, you prayed for the, you prayed for sunlight. You know, it, was, it seemed like, seemed like right after lunch, it was bedtime. Um, and, and, it, and it did, it did have, I have to tell you, it did have uh, an influence on the mood of the people, the, the, the people I was dealing with, uh, you know, people, Absolutely. friends, That's customers. That's they came up with those uh, light boxes, you know, phototherapy yeah. lamps, things like that. Yeah. It is because they notice, you know, that kind of like a disposition in people that are up there. That's like, all right, we got to do something. Right. So let's let's talk a little bit. Let's let's, let's talk a little bit about um, if I want to sleep better, where do I start? What do I do? You know, the idea here is to, you know, this uh, reflection, self-reflection on how you're doing. And you got that, that beautiful part on the right side, the F where sleeping is scale. But people already know it. But if you have this sheet and you can print it out, you can get it online anywhere and just fill it out for yourself. And if you have you go zero, one, two, three, what's your likelihood of dozing off or falling asleep? Mm -hmm. And if you're threes across the board, then chances are that there's something going on uh, that you you need to like uh, talk to somebody about it because they're going to try to figure out first if there's an underlying sleep disorder. Sure. So when you look at the boxes here, the nice way they put it, it was like um, that uh, it's like somebody speaking and somebody answering. So the idea is like if you feel fine during the day, then, you know, probably sleeping all right. There's nothing to like uh, really be concerned about. But if you take this F4 sleepiness scale and you say, that, all right, something's up and, you know, something doesn't feel right. My quality of life may be suffering a bit. Um, should I talk to somebody? And that's the idea is like, you should always mention something. And there's a problem with today's kind of medicine. If you go in there and you got a big toe problem, that's all they want to know about right. your big toe. But right. you, if you think something's there and you got that, that physician in front of you, nurse practitioner in front of you, you say something, it's like, you know what? I'm not sleeping. It's another issue. You got a couple minutes for me to go on about that. So tell them what's going on, how you feel, what time you go to bed, what time you wake up. Do you wake up a lot during the night? Do you make half a dozen trips to the bathroom during the night? They're going to want to know all of that because I want to know all that. And I write all of that stuff down. If there's something going on to where, you know, you feel like it's like I, I, I dreamed I dropped my fishing pole overboard and I, I fell out of the bed and cracked my head open. That could be an indication of uh, REM behavior disorder where you, instead of being paralyzed in dream state sleep, which everyone normally is, what if you regain motor control in REM sleep? How dangerous can that be? Just like one of my patients that cracked his head open thinking he was diving out of the boat to get his fishing pole. So you, you, you can't fake that either. When you see that in REM sleep with somebody regaining muscle control, that, that's something that we need to like uh, get on quick before they you know dive out a window or something like yeah. that. So if I if I get if I get this little this little piece of paper here, this Epps Epps going Epsworth sleeps uh, sleepiness yep. sleepiness scale, and I fill it out, who do I give it to? My doctor? Yep, you take it right over to him. It's like I filled that out. Do you have a minute to talk about this or you know what I feel? You know what brings people into the sleep clinic faster than anything is falling asleep behind the wheel. If you fell asleep driving or fell asleep at a red light, you got to get seen. You know, there is no two ways about it. You know, if you think that you're going to wake up with your car on top of you, mm -hmm. it, it's time to get seen. Or, and most of the time, it's when people are snoring and their spouse says, I can't sleep in the same room because of the loud snoring. I think he stops breathing and gasping for air. You wake up with your blood pressure pounding and your heart racing. That's an indication that it could be an underlying sleep disorder. Yeah. C. Williams put in the chat a question. Uh, what stage does light snoring fit in uh, if it does wake him, if it doesn't wake him up? You know, uh, primary snoring is not a big deal. It is to maybe the spouse. But um, if we don't see a pathology hooked up to it, what if you have, you have light snoring with no arousals at all? 
So no arousals means no sleep fragmentation and no sleep fragmentation means no daytime fatigue or your wake state is being affected by what's going on at night. Now yeah. your partner may have an environmental sleeping disorder because of your light snoring. And, and to me, if um, you know, the patient doesn't want to do anything about it and they have an extra bedroom and you know, they sleep in separate rooms. Sure. And then when you get somebody fixed up, he's like, now he won't be snoring. You could be back in the same bedroom. He goes, not so fast, doc. He was like, we kind of like it to where, you know, she can read <laughs> as much as she wants and turn off the lights when she wants. And, and that's true. You know, it's not old school where you have to go to bed at the same time. Sure. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. It, it, it's not the way it is. People have different schedules and, uh, you know, and it is nice sometimes to read in bed without somebody telling you to turn the light off. And it's fairly individualized. So let's kind of let's kind of talk about cannabis for a second, uh, Randy. You, you you've been you've been relaxed. We're going to put you to work now. Um, All right. Let's I know that, that there's been some research that's done. I think one of the things that's fascinating is the amount of research that's been done on can with cannabis and sleep. Um, here's here's one example here about how um, cannabis has really done something to be able to help with in, with insomnia, and and this this study that was out there. By the way, at the bottom you'll see down here a little link. This is where you can actually look for this study. You want to tell me a little bit about this? So uh, if we didn't know, we all have an endocannabinoid system. And I'm actually going to go off the slide as well. So uh, cannabis and insomnia. So uh, the role of the endo or ECS uh, or the endocannabinoid system on the, um, can you say that word, uh, rhythms? Circadian, um, yeah, circadian rhythms. Circadian circadian rhythms. Is, yeah, I mean, it really, what they really found by doing this study was uh, the literature they went and they found out that the endocannabinoid system has a direct link and a direct effect on the, the circadian rhythms, your, your sleep and wake schedule. Uh, not only your mood, not only your appetite in pain, but also in your sleep. And this is what, this is what was really important is to find out that THC has a, a dramatic effect on being able to help people sleep and also to reduce it, sleep, sleep uh, apnea which is something that a lot of people have. You know, you talk about getting these CPAP machines and all this kind of stuff. In many cases, um, grabbing something like some THC can actually help people sleep a lot better. I, I know that sleep, sleep apnea has a lot to do with your breathing, but th this actually helps. The, the, uh, what they found is that THC actually helps open up a lot of your breathing passages and a lot of the, the, the channels that are within your brain in the upper part of your body to be able to help them function better. And also what they found out that was is that CBD by itself has a lot of what they call sedative effects. In other words, when you're taking CD, C, C, CBD, people kind of relax, they kind of sit back, but that relaxing also puts your body into a, 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 an area where it makes it easier for you to sleep, for your, for your body, your brain, your, 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 your uh, receptors to really slow down and get yourself into a position where you can actually, it helps you be able to sleep. And then of course, obviously we're using them together has a better therapeutic effect than just using them by themselves. And that's what this particular study really showed. But what's interesting when, when you couple that with, there's another study that's out there, um, and this is where they use, we're using recreational cannabis. What they found out in Colorado when they, when they legalized cannabis was that the, if this, was, this is a really important part here, they found out that over-the-counter sleep medications fell 200%. I found that to be dramatic. Um, I know there's a lot of different things that happened in Colorado when it was legalized. And one of the things is people slept better, which is really, really fascinating. I think it really helped the overall population. I don't think people gave cannabis enough credit for being able to do that. Uh, I think it also, they found that it also helped with not only sleep improvement, but also helped people function a little bit better. So it, it's fascinating how, and in this particular case, it wasn't medical. It was just by being able to open up a recreational market the whole community seemed to just settle down a little bit. Uh, less accidents, less crime, a number of different things happened and it's been all been proven by the statistics by you know, the FBI, by a number of people, the law enforcement agencies, that the fire departments have all noticed a big dramatic effect in basically the population um, getting more into a, a calmer state than it was before. So I found that, I found that study really, really interesting. Um, Gotta yeah, like that. Yeah, you got to like that a little bit. So we talk about the endocannabinoid system. We mentioned earlier, Randy, you and I were alluding to that, where the ECS is something that maintains our body functions. We talked about the endocannabinoid system as something that maintains our mood, our appetite. We didn't realize it affected our circadian rhythms. And I think we're not going to beat the dead horse, but uh, CBD 
does a lot to reduce anxiety and does a lot to reduce pain. And when you get rid of anxiety and you get rid of pain, um, Dr. Holt, does that help you sleep better? Absolutely. You know, and I tried to it once in uh, California, maybe three or four years ago, and uh, it put me right out within like five minutes or so. And I was like, huh, it does work. Yeah. You know, and, and it really is interesting. I, I had a, a, a left knee operation, which, you know, I, I being a senior citizen and an older dog, you know, they start replacing parts. Um, what was interesting is uh, one, I was using a high regimen of THC because right after the operation, I chose not to use pain medication, but pharma pain medication. I used medical cannabis, which by the way, worked great. My pain levels, I was able to keep it below a one back then and I'll actually all the way to today. But what happened one evening is I ran out of THC. The, the bottle I thought was half full and it turned out to be, it turned out to be empty. Um, so what I did was I took a little bit more CBD and what happened was two things. My pain went, went down substantially and I fell asleep. And when I went and talked to my doctor about it, he was explaining to me that what happened was as my inflammation went down, it reduced the amount of pain. And I was taking THC to be able to go after the pain and it really, the, 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 I was treating the symptom and not the cause. And by reducing the inflammation, what it did is it made it easier for me to sleep. And it's something that I, I really follow today. I know I do. Um, I'm, I'm a crazy, I should, old guys shouldn't be doing things like martial arts, and I do. Um, and what's interesting is that it, it's something that really puts pressure on my knees and my, my body. But I find that by using a high regimen of CBD, it's kept my body in, in, in a place where um, not only is it pretty much by reduced the pain substantially, this old dog that's a senior citizen feels that he has a body of a 40-year-old. I mean, seriously, it's, it really has been amazing as to what it's done for my health. Now, that being said, we have two bad knees that are artificial, but if I can get rid of those, boy, I'd be in great shape, right? If I had those naturally, I'd be in great shape. But I think this goes back to what it's just trying to point out. Here's where everything starts coming together, the endocannabinoid system, the reducing of sleep. And I think also they also found out that um, cannabis can help you substantially with a lot of the, also the side effects of insomnia and, and, and sleep effects. Randy, do you see a lot of that it, 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 in your line uh, of work? Do you see people coming in there with like sleeping problems, insomnia, chronic pain? Definitely. And that's actually the two most um, qualifying condition um, products that people will come for. So they'll be seeking uh, sleep help or um, um, pain help and normally they'll go to like the most highest THC or the most highest CBD product and it's like no you must add them together like a lock and a key in order to work properly as Mark accidentally find, found out but um, it was a good accident you know sure. but um, we definitely do see a lot of um, sleep or um, insomnia patients. Um, do, you pain guys, patients. do you guys have, have the the training or is it like a, a you know um the, these type of symptoms, this is the line of products that you, you should recommend. I mean, is, are your guys like up on, on it? We actually leave most of the recommendation up to the physician because that's the physician's oh. um, position to tell their patient what to use and what not to use, but we can educate you on the product itself. So um, just saying a random product of capsules, we can tell you how the capsules are going to work. Um, I can explain to you how the capsules uh, have made me feel in the past or explain to you the uh, science behind our capsules, but I can't specifically say, Dr. Right, Greg right. Holt, true, go true grab. Dispensary. Right, yeah. Correct. Yeah, I think, I think you're, you're not trying to be physicians. I think what you're trying to do is you're trying to be uh, really people that say, based on what you have, here's something that helps. I know if, if I walk into Trulieve and I say, look, I'm looking for something with mercy in it because I'm really trying to get, get, get a better night's sleep you're schooled at telling me what products have myrcene in it and what, what works there. Um, Correct. We're kind of like your pharmacist in a way. Right. So, and the problem with cannabis being so personalized is that for one person, it can work one way. And for another person, it can work another way. I know that there's, as, as a practitioner, we have golden rules of take a tincture and after 15 to 30 minutes, it'll, it'll, it'll work. But there are people based on their metabolism, based on their bodies, based on how they absorb it, that it may take as much as two hours for a sublingual to work. So it really, it really depends on your body. And I know the famous question is, what should I take? What, what should I do? And, you know, in pharma medicine uh, that you get from, from the pharma companies, everything's based on weight. So they'll take, you know, take two pills and call me in the morning. And unfortunately, uh, in the cannabis business, it's based on your body. You know, the best 
read, the best person to tell you if it's working or not is your body. If you listen to your body, if you're trained to listen to your body and you're trained to understand the, 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 the effects, your body will tell you if you take, haven't taken enough or you've taken too much or when to take it. And that's what's really, really interesting. And I think the hard part is just listening to your body as to what's right to use with respect to medicines like cannabis, because it's so personalized. The products I take are dramatically different than the products my wife takes. And it just has to do with our bodies. It just has to do with my metabolism versus her metabolism type of thing. Definitely. I'm a really thin individual, so um, but I've been a patient for years. So my tolerance can be totally different from somebody else that started yesterday. They're going to be completely different. So I'm um, looking at it like fingerprints. Our, everybody's endocannabinoid system is different from one another. So right. the goal is homeostasis. But Right. Right. Yeah. It's there. Now, what's interesting is you know, for, since I remember talking to people about medicine, I hear about the nervous system. And to me, I look at the nervous system as like the cell phone system within our bodies. It communicates, helps communicate one, one place to another, does it through electrical signals. Um, and so we have this, and we all know about the nervous system. We've known about it for a long time. So if we have a problem where we hurt our finger, hurt our toe, hurt our knee, um, you know, it, 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 that signal, the nervous system knows it's there. It tells the brain that we have a problem. And what I find fascinating is what does the brain do with it? You know, hey, Houston, we have a problem. Well, what does Houston do with it? And what's fascinating is there's an endocannabinoid system in our body that works with the nerves nerve uh, in the neurological system, says, okay, we have a problem. So we're going to produce the endocannabinoids to be able to address that problem to put the, set, to put the, the body back into a balanced state and or homeostasis. And what I'm shocked about is the endocannabinoid system, we now know more, a lot more about it, especially since the Israelis started doing a lot of the research into, into cannabis. But why did it take so, I, I just can't figure out why it took medical science so long to figure out the endocannabinoid system when this is really the system in our body that regulates our memory, our appetite, our anxiety, our inflammation, our immune system. This is basically the regulatory system in our body. Um, and it's so important to us that it's really, really fascinating. Andy, you got any comments on this? Um, not really, but yes, sir. CB1, CB2 receptors. I'm talking about the uh, nervous system. Um, we all have CB1, CB2 receptors within our body that um, send those signals to those um, particular areas that's needed for pain or re-regulation or um, the anti-inflammatory properties. So um, CB2 one, CB, CB1 and CB2 receptors um, have different properties. So THC and CBD um, hit different one of those receptors. Um, but we will, I'm pretty sure, get into that as well. And we'll but, go into that a little bit more. CB1 receptors are mainly found in the brain. And CB2 receptors are mainly found in the central nervous system and in, 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 in our bodies, which is interesting because when we talk about cannabis, the question that I always get is, why is cannabis such a big deal? I, I just go smoke a joint and I'm okay. And the answer is not really. Um, we know that we have, we produce these things called endocannabinoids. And endocannabinoids is how your body naturally helps heal itself. What's interesting is we found out that in the cannabis plant itself, they, we produce what they call phytocannabinoids. And those phytocannabinoids, interestingly enough, structurally match our endocannabinoids or endogenous cannabinoids. In other words, they, they're, they're a direct match. The best way of understanding it is I'm a senior citizen. I want to be able to produce endocannabinoids to address parts of the problem that I have, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, a mood, whether it's uh, pain, uh, inflammation, or whatever. And if, I can, if I'm not producing as much now as I did when I was 30 or 40, I can now put some photocannabinoids in my body. And in essence, it's like a battery system. I have, I'm storing in my body the components that, that it needs to be able to manage itself and to be able to help itself. And I think the other side about it is that when your body does see a problem and starts producing the endocannabinoids, it takes a while for it to do that. It could take a couple hours for it to do that. Where if you have the phytocannabinoids in your body, it works almost immediately. That's why vape pins work. That's why, top, that's why topicals work. That's why a lot of those things work because your body immediately pulls on them and starts working the things that are out there. And I found that to be very, very interesting. Um, someone says that we are all mute, muted. Lee, Deja, are we all muted? I'm um, mic check. I'm here. 
I can, um, I can hear you fine, Mark. And okay, okay good. Sounds fine to me. Mike, Michael, just uh, you might want to check. Hopefully, we're I think we're all good. But thank you very much for the comment, Mike. We really appreciate it. Um, oh, maybe they're all muted. Yes. yes, that's what I mean. That's what he means, I think. Yeah. So what's interesting is that when you when you have when you have the phytocannabinoids, um, what's interesting is that your body is storing those that in in your basically in your fatty acids, and I think that's that's really really important. I think that's what you were alluding to, right? Right, Randy? Correct. Um, getting back to this, um, so, at, so there are so many cannabinoids. Uh, well, most... gonna get it. We're going to go into that in just a minute. But okay. I think the, the one thing I wanted to point out, I always get a lot of questions. People say, I always see cannabis with this funky little bud thing. This, this, this crazy little, this little flower. Trico. It doesn't look much like a flower. It kind of looks like a, a bush or a weed. Hence okay. why they call it weed. Um, but really what we're looking for is the, the, these little things at the end of these things are the trichomes. And so when you're in the cannabis world, what they're really trying to show you is that not only that the, the trichomes are there, but also the color of the trichomes that has an effect on what, what the product does and what the product doesn't do. The whole plant is good for you. That's why whole plant cannabis is good for you. But a lot of the abundance of the cannabinoids, the terpenes and the flavonoids are stored in these little teeny crystals that you see out here, which are called trichomes. And I just want to point that out. I know that, again, it's one of those questions that people always ask is, why do you show these crazy pictures of these funky flowers? Because what we're really showing you is the power of the product and what's, and what's there. But Randy, I stole your thunder you, a second ago. You know, I look at cannabis as a medicine cabinet. And what's interesting is what we're doing is we're really unlocking a medicine cabinet when we use medical cannabis. It goes back to your point about, tell me about the medical properties, the cannabinoids and terpenes. We have a lot of them out there, right, Randy? Yes, we definitely do. We mostly hear about uh, THC and CBD, but um, those are cannabinoids. And then we have terpenes as linalool, bicaryophylline, um, that all work together in synchronicity to create that entourage effect. I know I'm probably getting ahead of us still, but <laughs> um, those all work together in synergy. So um, going back to uh, cannabinoids, um, as, in, as in THC or CBD, they all help with um, one of the um, conditions on the right. So PTSD, glaucoma, um, they all affect each of one of us differently. So um, going back just a little bit, and THC. Even more fascinating is, yeah, when you look at some of the CBD and the CBD derivatives, CBN, that type of thing, they all affect, for example, pain or sleep. And if you look at THC, you'll have some THC cannabinoids that also affect uh, sleep and pain. So when you use the THC and the CBD together, in essence, you're like one and one is three. What you're doing is you have a barrage, you have an entourage of, of, of medication to really address all the different conditions that you see over here that we know cannabis helps with. Correct. Which is what the entourage effect is all about. One of the other things that's fascinating is I always, I, what I hear patients will tell me, you know, Mark, I, I, I took it for glaucoma and the pain in my shoulder went away. Or I took it for arthritis and I'm now getting a good night's sleep. Your body knows where your problem is. It doesn't need a doctor to tell you. It, does, it doesn't need a doctor to tell it. And when it knows there's a problem, it will immediately address it through, again, producing endocannabinoids. And as long as it has the resources to do that, aka the phytocannabinoids, it will not only treat the, the condition that you're primarily going after, it'll treat other conditions in your body that make you feel a lot better. It's there. One of, one, of, one of the things that happens is people say, I'm, I'm more relaxed after I take it. Now, Randy, we were talking about CB1 and CB2, right? Correct. That are there. And we know CB1, CBD, THC, and CBD affect the CB1 and CB2 receptors. That's been known for a long time. But I don't think a lot of people know, especially the last year and a half, we have found that CBD affects more than just the CB1 and the CB2 receptors. There's a number of other receptors in the body. And Greg, I think this kind of starts getting into your territory over here of other receptors that we have that really the different cannabinoids are addressing that help us overall be able to not only just get a good night's sleep, but it affects a whole bunch of other things. Like you mentioned serotonin, right, right Greg? Yeah, you know, it's like a ubiquitous kind of receptor, like a spread out through the, the, the entire population of cells inside the body with you know, like collections and more or less in certain areas. But things like that, that 5-HT is serotonin when you're looking at things like uh, 
depression, mood effects, things like that. So, and, and serotonin is one of those kind of receptors where they've used like a regular drug therapy for depression, and bipolar disorder to, to work on that receptor population. So it, they're, it's almost like it's, it's fun to say that they're everywhere, so they have a purpose. So when you can target those with certain uh, chemicals um, in, in you know, uh, different concentrations or combinations, you can have the desired effect. But you always have to remember, you know, like any drug that you have the desired effect and then you can have 50 other things that it could do as well. So it, right. it really is watching out what you do. Right. And, you know, like, like, like the, the GRP 55 regulates blood pressure. I mean, I've had been asked questions that does cannabis help with blood pressure? And the answer is yes, but it doesn't do it through the CB1 and CB2 receptors. It's doing it through another receptor. And that's one of the reasons that's what as we're doing more research. We're finding out really that this plant is a medicine cabinet. Um, it has more medical properties. I was talking to a pharma executive of a very large, um, one of the top uh, five uh, pharma companies in the world, actually top three. And uh, his comment to me was that plant has more um, healing properties and medication than our whole company. <laughs> and I found it to be very interesting. And it's really true. We just haven't discovered them all, but we know they're there. And that's, I think that's one of the things that I think um, we need to do more research on and be able to find more about. But I think also when you look at THCV, that's something that has, this has a tremendous amount of uh, positive effects uh, you know, on your body and, 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 and help you quite a bit. It's there. So, so, Rand, uh, um, so Randy, we talked a lot about when we first, when I got into cannabis, at least um, when I was a kid, I heard about sativa and indica. 10 years ago, I heard about sativa and indica. And that seemed to be the, 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 the golden words, um, you know, they each had different properties. Tell me about indica and sativa. What's, so, the, what's the general characteristic? So general characteristics um, from a growing point of view, um, your indica plant is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, sativa is going to be a little, little bit longer and uh, more uh, wider and taller. But um, indica, think about indica in the couch. You're going to be couch locked most likely and not going to want to go anywhere. Um, at Truly, we do mark all of our indica sativas, um, and then there's a third one, which I know we probably have a slide for it, but um, um, we mark them um, colorized. So our indicas are red, and then we have what's called sativa. Sativa um, is going to get you up, motivated, and going, and basically have you, um, it's going to be more energetic with inside of your head, and indica is going to be a more full body, if I could yeah. explain it a little bit better. Right. What's interesting, what's interesting is what we, have, what we have found over especially the last five to 10 years is we found a whole bunch of more cannabinoids. In other words, there's over 200 cannabinoids we know that are out there. There's only about 120 of them that are being studied. We know that there are now over 100 terpenes of which there's only about 40 of them that have been studied. So we know there's a lot of medical properties that are out there. But what we began to realize is when you put the cannabinoids together with the terpenes, it produces a certain type of effect. And we'll talk about something like myrcene in a minute because that has a lot to do with sleep. But when you put the cannabinoids and the terpenes together, it basically gives what they call a fingerprint of that particular strain or that particular product, which we, we call cultivars, okay? I think the people were saying, well, what strain should I use here? What strain should I use there? Really, it's not the strain as much as what's the combination of cannabinoids and terpenes together because that was what will cause the effect that's there. And, and I say that because when I was taking my uh, pain medication for my knee, I took a, a, a product that was nine THC to one CBD. Again, I'd worked with some, some medical cannabis doctors. I worked with my medical doctor. We decided that we we're gonna go with a nine to one, especially right after the operation, because they're handing out Percocets like popcorn, um, you know, to, to address it. Um, and what was interesting was about a year and a half later, I noticed that that same company had, again, a nine to one, nine THC to one CBD, and they called it Dream. It was for sleeping. And I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> that product, when it was taken for pain, would definitely energize you. And they're now talking about for sleeping. When I went back and talked to them, they said, look, we basically changed the terpene, the terpene profile. One of them had a high profile of, of myrcene, and the other one didn't. And as we, we pointed out earlier, where THC helps the brain to be able to basically calm down and relax, the myrcene worth it actually help to be able to calm it and help you get more sleep. And that has to do with what I call the cultivar. One, one was built for sleep, one was built for pain management. And basically the difference, terpenes. That's safe to say, Randy? 
Definitely safe to say. And terpenes, I love uh, terpenes are not just in cannabis. Um, if um, you all did not know that terpenes are actually found in nature as well. So um, as Mark was speaking about mercine, mercine, you can actually find it in mangoes. Mm -hmm. So um, there are some effects when you combine the both, but I won't speak about that right now. But um, go ahead. But uh, mercine, um, like I said, commonly found in Helps Mango. And, yeah. and by the way, when you put together your cultivar collection, what I really love is really where your heading is, is truly is really looking at medical medical conditions and putting together products that really address a number of the medical conditions. And I know a lot of the people look at, you know, what's th how much THC is in it, how much CBD is in it. And I think they really should be asking, what are the what are the what are the terpenes that are in it? I recommend to my patients when you go into a dispensary, don't talk about the strain, talk about the terpenes. Because or the highest percentage of THC because a lot of people go for the highest percentage and yeah. it's like you're gonna just probably go to sleep like or yeah feel really great but like what is that actually truly doing for you is this medicine or are you now utilizing it for other purpose you know you understand Mark <laughs> yeah, I get I get it you know as a, as a recreational user your goal is to get the highest amount of TH the, the, the highest amount of THC for the buck I mean, in California, when you go to the dispensaries, they have their like kind of like their deal of the day or the deal of the week: high THC, low CBD, and and really, it's 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 a rec user. But when you're looking at it from a medical standpoint, what I'm looking at is what does it do for me? How is it addressing my particular medical condition? And how do I address it with the the, the different uh, terpene profiles that are out there? I, I I mean, I spent some time in Nevada. I spent some time in California, just talking to the different many different dispensaries, and I was shocked at the lack of knowledge. Of terpenes that the bud tenders had at these dispensaries. Well, they're not worried about that, Mark. You know that. In a recreational market, they don't. They didn't really care. But as when I was going in and trying to help my mother, for example, who had who had problems with sleep, had, had problems with, with with pain, I'm looking for a definite a terpene profile, and it was really it was a little tougher to find than I thought. I had to really dig down in the COAs to figure out what was out there. That is shocking. I was just about to speak about our COAs. On our COAs, which is our certificate of analysis, um, um, our products from True Leave come with um, a batch number. You're able to actually see all of the terpenes and cannabinoids that are inside the plant. So um, that's what actually makes up um, the plant and give you gives you the entourage effects itself. So but I think um, that's certain really yeah, I think that's really important. And that's what I love about you guys doing with your cultivar collection. You're really heading in a direction to be able to help people to be able to address their medical conditions. Definitely. They're there. And, and that ties back to finding your sweet spot. You know, that sweet spot that we talked about, um, which are, you know, when I have, for example, what is my biology? What is, what is what, how does my body work? Um, how much, when I take so much, how does it affect it? What consumption method? You know, if you take a vape pen, it'll work very different than if you take a, a, an edible. And we'll get into that in a few slides. But the point is, a lot of that has to do with finding your sleep. What is your therapeutic point of relaxing? Where does it address your particular condition? Because if you go past it, you may actually aggravate it. And if you don't have enough of it, it doesn't resolve it. So you got to find that, what we call that sweet spot. Where is that point at which you know you would take that? It really works. And it's not something that's complex. I mean, in my particular case, it took about two and a half weeks. But also, candidly, as the years go by, I've adjusted it almost quarterly because I, I do have different conditions that pop up and I'm getting older. You know, I'm, I, it, things just aren't working like they were before. I wish, but you know, it's, it's, it's there. It's out there. So let's talk about, let's talk about those, those quote unquote strains, because that's what people like to talk about. And I want to point out something when we talk about strains and we talk about sleep, look at the dominant terpene profile of every strain that was really good for sleep. Kind of tells you to look for terpenes, doesn't it? Yes. Kind of tells you what the dominant terpene is. Whenever I'm going into purchase, I always ask what the terpene profile look for, what I'm looking for. Um, and most of the time pick out mercy, but I'll look at linalool also. But mercy, like I was about to say, is wonderful. Um, it has an earthy taste to it. Uh, mercy is recognized as a potential anti-inflammatory, pain reliever, muscle relaxant. It's also a sedative. Um, so getting back to that indica in the couch, uh, right. Granity Purple, um, truly is a company that is a strain based company. And you will actually see Granity Purple as one of our strains um, that we carry um, and a few of these other ones. But um, 
mercing is very important. Terpenes are one of the most important things when you utilizing this plant. So yeah. you guys carry a lot of the Kush products, the OG Kush. Yes, that type yes. Of stuff. I'm a huge Kush fan. Um, okay. okay, Randy. So here's here's your here's your question for today. What does OG stand for? <laughs> OG has a couple a couple meanings. <laughs> actually, so uh, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Actually, I found out that OG came Ori from ocean grown, meaning it's from California. I, I was so about to say original genetics, original. Yeah, original genetics. <laughs> <laughs> they talk about the original strains the original gangster, from Southern it? California. I was about to say that as well, but <laughs> What's that now? Laugh. Dr. Holt? Original gangster is what I always knew. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say it, but uh, but you yes, know it has yes. it has to do with a strain of a strain of products that came out of Southern California uh, that actually were that were was was some of the first cultivars that were being developed for things like sleep and for pain. Which is interesting. So original Kush, yeah, okay. The original Kush, which is there, and, nice. and as opposed to some of the other Kushes, which uh, really and there's an Afghan style of the Kush that really isn't as effective as the OG Kush, which is really interesting. And the reason is because of the genetics where they actually spent time. One one was grown in the wild, and the other was grown, you know, through through uh, through uh, nurseries for yes. a particular purpose, aka the cultivar. It's there. Yes. Little known, little known fact. But I also find it very interesting when you look at the THC to CBD ratio of this. Look at the ratio of THC to CBD. It's very high. Three to one. Yeah. And you and really don't... don't I, I personally don't notice it at times because it's like the terpenes take over and it's just like I know how much to medicate with personally, but um, everybody's body is different. But um, that may look like a lot to some people, but that is a nice nice gap in the ratio though so but i think it's also important to point out this is why when you're doing dosing go low and go slow because yes. in order to really affect sleep you're going to need to be able to have thc and and a lot of people say well i'll just take some cbd and it'll help me sleep well it will maybe but for sure if you can again going back to the slides we showed where the thc was really helping your your, your brain waves calm down your brain calm down and be able to be effect you really need to have that there but you got to be careful because, you know, it's, it's, it's something that um, it's something that, that take still go low and go slow is, is something that really pays attention. I wish I'd have learned that when I was in college learning how to drink, but um, you know, it's something that we should pay attention to as we get older and we're using cannabis that's out here. Definitely 100% agree. Cause I've been in positions myself where like, I know right from wrong and took a little bit too much. And now I'm a little paranoid, but the good thing about cannabis though, Mark is we woke up the next morning. Yeah. A, we woke up. And the other thing is, if you take an equal amount of CBD to THC, if you, if you take a product, let's say you take 25 milliliters, so the bottom of the eyedropper, the first line on the eyedropper, and you get high and to a point where you're, you're getting anxious, take that equal amount of just pure CBD with no THC in it. And within 20 minutes, it'll bring you back down about 20 or 30 minutes. It'll bring you back down to where you were before. I know that's, that's what I found to be very effective. I recommend all my patients to have a bottle of CBD next to them just in case. Because Always. you know you just don't know where your body's going to be. There's some doctors that recommend chewing on black pepper. God bless, you know it does work. Okay. It does work. I was about to say that it does work. It does. <laughs> I would much rather take a little CBD, a little orange CBD, than, than chewing on some black peppers. That's just yeah. my uh, my personal preference. Greg, what's your thoughts? I've never chewed on black pepper, so I, I couldn't say if that works. <laughs> it does. Just don't swallow the black pepper since we uh, stated that. Just don't swallow it if you're going to chew on it. Um, just um, utilize it that way. But always have a thing of CBD around because um, this is a medical program, but it is medicinal um, versus just utilizing the plant to get medicated, per se. Um, mm -hmm. You're actually utilize, utilizing it for medicine now. Um, yeah. um, there are effects from CBD. I see a lot of people from over the counter CBD utilizing say this stuff doesn't work. This stuff is crap. And it's just like, no, it's not. You have not tried cannabis derived CBD because right. there's hemp derived CBD and cannabis derived CBD, which is right. another topic, but, um, yeah. You know, yeah, there's, there's beer and wine, you know, and there is a difference that's out there. Right. Let's talk about your favorite subject, which is terpenes. Tell oh, me yes. a little bit about the. Why don't you tell? Why don't we start with the? the why don't we start with the world famous one, Mercy, because that seems to be the one that for sleep is is the is the the main one. 
Yes, so Mersine we have here. So you see Mersine in actually the fourth one down next to Linalool. Um, it's going to have a fruity aroma. Oh, go back real quick. It's going to have a fruity aroma, um, a fragrant um, plant and herb, including mangoes, thyme, um, lemongrass, and basil. So meaning Mersine is not just found in cannabis or um, mangoes. It's found throughout nature. Mm. Um, some of the effects are um, it's an antibiotic, um, anti-inflammatory analgesic ah i can never say that word uh Energy. Energy, correct <laughs> uh, sedative um but it has many uses um but these are the six most common terpenes that you're going to find within the cannabis plant and that we have studied also um but i think mercine is the one found most in most uh in most cannabis plants I and mean, there's very few most strains have some a certain amount of, of mercine that's in it also what's interesting is when you take a look at terpaline uh, that's actually very good as the sedative properties that are there correct it's out there as well so correct then, just yeah. like correct good yeah and linalool is also very good for 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 being able linalool is great to be able to relax you being able to to be able to have you just you know, get into that, get into that, as Greg says, get you into that state where it helps you be able to fall asleep, uh, which is, which is really, really, really important to you. I mean, a lot of these are tied, when you look at them, they're tied very closely to essential oils. I was just about to say that <laughs> a little, little like lavender. Um, that was one that I use next to my bed almost every night and basically mm -hmm. pour like two drops in there. And before you know it, I was off to bed. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, going to what Dr. Holt said, um, it's nice to have that wind down time. So like right around my wind down time, maybe about 30 minutes before bed, I will place that into my um, diffuser, uh, oil diffuser and basically utilize it. So now instead of diffusing, I do that every now and then I utilize my cannabis in a different way, but um, I'm still utilizing the terpenes um, from the earth. But um, besides those two, we have pinene, b caryophylline, actually caryophylline, and then humulene as well. I know Alina asked a question, what terpenes are best for pain? What's fascinating is that really falls in the middle of the category there. Um, caryophylline, myrcene, and, and linalool are just great for, for pain management. Um, pinene will also help quite a bit as well. The thing about pinene that I always caution people on is pinene is great for pain management. It's very earthy. Um, woody kind of kind of a texture. Uh, it, it also helps you with your memory. So if you you're having you know as you get older, we'll lose a little bit of memory. It helps quite a bit. Good news. Bad news. If you're suffering from PTS, you want to really kind of cut down on the, on the pining because you really don't want to bring back a lot of those um, memories. What you're trying to do is unless it, not necessarily suppress them, but you're really trying to not just bring them back. I wouldn't necessarily. I would stay away from uh, strains that have uh, high concentrations of pining. That's safe to say, Randy? Yes, very safe to say. 100% yeah. agreed. Yeah. But each of these has a particular characteristic. And it's not like a cannabis, or a strain has a terpene. They're usually fine when you look at it. There's, there's a lot of different terpenes that are out there. And I know Amy asked a question in the beginning about, um, are we unable to find the molecular weight of the medical marijuana terpenes? Um, I, Randy, I'll let you take that because when you look at the certificate of analysis, the COAs, it will give you how much the weight, yes. the weight, the weight that's in there. I think what's Correct. happening, Amy. I'm to not sure percentage. you know how to find the COA. So help me out here, uh, Randy. How do we find a COA? Sure. So on the side of our products, or any, um, I can only speak for truly. So on the side of our products, there's a let me get little this barcode. Soon. Yep, there's like a little barcode there. Scan that barcode, and you're going to get a. Um, code go to our website on the bottom of our website i'll actually throw it in the chat here in a moment but on the bottom of our website there's a test section just type that code that you got in there um it's normally like a fn number but um, um type the code in and it'll basically give you the entire certificate of analysis so you're going to see how much mercine is in there or if any is in there which most likely is going to be some but you can see if there's pining in there or a little or um you can see the exact percentage by weight um, you can see the cannabinoids as well. Um, besides that, we do test for um, heavy metals, of course, to make sure you have a safe product. Um, not all companies test their products um, and give out the test, um, but uh, we're one of the companies that's transparent. So um, we want to 
let you know what's in your medicine and what you're taking and put it inside your body, which right. is very I think important. all of the all of the quality with you know, I deal with all of us, all the dispensaries, and I can tell you that the the, the when they say who do you recommend, I only recommend dispensaries that you can have that it has a barcode on the side and you can check out the COAs. Okay, mm -hmm. you really want to know what's there. And I think most of, in fact, almost all the uh, dispensaries I know have a COA of some kind, but I like to find it right on the product because that tells you the batch number, the test of that particular batch number. And just for your information, the quality dispensaries test the product twice and then give it to a third party that also does a test. So you have a th uh, you have their verification and you have a third party verification. I was about to say we test three times. Yes. <laughs> and so we make sure you have a safe product once you get home yeah. um, because it like anything else like a plant so a plant can accumulate mold or something of that nature we want to make sure that you're, that you're not inhaling that or ingesting that with inside your body because you know that can be unfortunately um not good so randy you have a little something called cbn and, and dr holt you've heard of cbn cbn has been found to be really great to not only uh, it, it really is very effective for pain which also is very effective for insomnia and I know there's a huge controversy of the CBN really work because it's reducing pain or does it work because it induces insomnia and candidly, they're still studying a lot of that. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if you I do a don't. rain dance and it rains <laughs> and you want, you want rain, do the rain dance. Yep. <laughs> CBN, I like to call it CB night. Um, yeah. It is super, uh, I, I, I'll take this back. It is super sedative for me, but it is, gear to be a sedative so we have it a truly even five milligram capsules and a 30 count uh, for 40, 40 i believe right now but the prices always change but um cbn is um by itself non-cycle active so you're gonna get a feeling of just calmness uh, yes so i actually took it in the middle of the day mark um i just want to see well, what we're gonna at, do to me look at the you terpene know. profile i mean looking at linole you got myrcene, you get humulene. And what's fascinating is those are the three things that calm you. And really, you're right. That's, it's, it's good, especially if you're dealing with pain during the day. It's something PTSD. that will help you quite a bit. Now, I also have to caution you. If your pain goes away, your body kind of goes, and it relaxes. And you got to be careful because that will, that is, Greg, as it'll tell you, that's what helps you go to sleep, right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. I have times where I just <laughs> go to sleep. So I, I understand and agree. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's, uh, I, I know, um, I, I hope I hopefully answered the question about the terpenes, but let's, let's talk a little bit about routes of administration. So how do I take this? And what I, what I've done is kind of taking a look at breaking it down into four kinds of products. One of them, is, you know, the inhalation, oral, sublingual and topical. Randy, you know, really when you inhale products, what you're doing is you're putting it directly into the lungs um, and it, it works almost immediately and it works for two to six hours, right? Correct. Correct. So that's um, one of the quickest ways to utilize the medicine and um, say, for instance, you have pain. That's a great PRN um, uh, medication to utilize is the inhalation method. Um, depending on the product that you pick from, there's so many inhalation products uh, we can go over, but you know, vape pen, flower, um, concentrates, yeah, inhalers as well. Um, but uh, it does last about two to six hours. Um, the onset is probably going to be like, like you said, immediate, but probably if you're a seasoned user, maybe about 30. 40, 50 seconds, maybe a minute, you'll start to feel it, maybe a few minutes, right. but I mean, it all depends on the person though. Right. But, now I know that, I know that uh, in fact, Anonymous, uh, somebody from Anonymous asked the question, and thank you very much. This is one of my favorite subjects. It says, I was told that if you burn off, that when you light, uh, it says, I was told that you burn off the terpenes when you actually light up uh, or use a vape pen. Is that true? When you yeah. light a, when you light a joint, uh, that 500 yeah. degree temperature, burns off about half of the cannabinoids, all of the terpenes, and all the flavonoids. And what's remarkable to me is you're, you're basically taking away about two-thirds of the medical properties of the, of the cannabis joint. And, and yet, look how smoking. powerful it is, and look how much it helps people. And that's only operating at one-third of the capacity of what it can do. And I find that just absolutely amazing. But yes, it absolutely does. Hence why, in my particular case, if people are looking at using cannabis and want to use inhale, I, I actually recommend concentrates. 
And I know a lot of people push the vape pens. Um, I did in doing next week, I'll do a, 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 a webinar on, on routes of administration. And I took the, uh, I actually looked at the vape pens of all the different dispensaries and found out who made them. Okay. And what I did was I found out that I won't give the name of the manufacturer, but a lot of them burn at about 400 degrees. And really the ideal temperature is 360 to 380. And you're burning off a lot. And even the vape pens you buy in the store really burn off a lot of the terpenes. And so is the second part of his question is, a vape pen will burn off some of the terpenes that you may not want to have burned off. It also will trigger some other cannabinoids that, that are there. But I would say the best thing to do is, is use concentrates because you can set the temperature, low, medium, or high, for example. Or actually, if you use, um, for, for, for flour, I have a device that actually I can set the temperature. So I can set it to 260, 270, and I can get my maximum effect that's out there. I was just about to say that. Um, so um, he likes concentrates. I like flour. So um, for flour, I like to use um, a inhalation device. So um, inhalation, the word inhalation kind of got not miscued, but um, there's an actual flour device I have called a PAX-3. Um, mm -hmm. You can do a Firefly 2. Um, there's many different ones out there. I'm a, but I'm a mighty, I'm a mighty three user. Oh, I am as well. I Mighty love my Pax is, 3. <laughs> yeah. Mighty 3 the, is the best in my yeah. opinion. There's a lot of them that are out there. And I'm like, this is not a commercial. Where this is no, no. It's out there. But what I love about the Mighty 3 is within 60 seconds, it warms up to the temperature. You can use net, you can use flour, and you're able to get the, the terpenes, the flavonoids, and, and, the, and the cannabinoids without burning them all off. And so, and, and I think flour is very effective. It, it, it what's done. But I just think that, you know, the concept of rolling a joint now, my friend Greg Lamont, Dumont, who's uh, with the Grateful Veterans, will tell you what he loves about rolling the joint is the therapeutic effect of taking that piece of paper, rolling it out. There's a therapeutic part of it, and I will give him full credit <laughs> for the therapeutic effect. But for the medicinal benefit, Jeff, we have to draw. He even has to draw a line and say, "Yeah, it may not be as good for me as as, as that is that is that uh, the vaporizing pen or that vaporizer, I should say." Correct. But concentrates are great, and we'll talk about that next Definitely week. Definitely agreed. Definitely agreed, but I, I would definitely save those for more experienced users, unless you know you're gonna follow the directions of uh, your physician or um, what we offer is consultations also. So follow the directions of how to use concentrates properly. Yeah, you're good. Good point. True Leave offers free consultation, and it's free. And you can call Absolutely. up free, or you can go to the website virtual. and you can call them. They will give you a virtual consultation, or they'll do one in, in the office. And it's free, and they'll actually be able to talk to you about your condition, what products will work for you, and the different routes of administration. And 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 I think anybody who's not only new to cannabis, but getting in has been with cannabis for a while, it really doesn't hurt to to kind of check that out. It's kind of like that the airplane pilots always check out before they fly. They always walk around the airplane and check it out. Um, I think the same thing is true with cannabis. It doesn't hurt to be able to do that. That's that really out there. But anyway, when after the inhalation, I think a lot of people get into cannabis using either sublingual or oil. So sublingual is very interesting. So tell me about that, Randy. So sublingual, you have your tincture. Actually, sublingual and oral to me <laughs> is kind of the same in a way, but you have different products for those two routes of administration. So um, breaking it down, sublingual um, or oral, they're going to take a lot longer to onset within your system. But with that, take it a lot longer, it's going to have a longer effect, which mm -hmm. that you want most of the time. So um, touching back just on inhalation quickly, I like to, before bed, if I'm having trouble sleeping, I like mm -hmm. to take a little bit of uh, indica, inhale that so it helps me get to sleep. But be way beforehand, I've taken either a sublingual product or an oral capsule. And um, after the um, indica that I've inhaled puts me to sleep, that oral caps will open up while I'm sleeping and basically um, keep me asleep. Um, and that's a good point. You're, you're mixing and matching the routes of administration. We're using vaping and oral. Now, I, I, I agree with it. One the nice part about oral, oral goes into the stomach. It gets it put in the stomach lining that when it, it's absorbed that way, the, the delta nine turns into the, in hydroxy delta 11, which is actually more powerful uh, and really helps you quite a bit. But it'll last more like uh, six to 10 hours. So if you're going to go to sleep, time an, oral, an edible, for example, is great. I, so now you you take capsules. I'm I'm big into chocolates. I'm a chocoholic. Oh, so wow. about an hour right. before I go to sleep every night, I grab my chocolate 
and it takes about an hour to work and mm -hmm. I, it gives me that, that eight to 10 hours of, of relief. It really helps me quite a bit. That's what helps me. Now the sublingual drops where that comes into play in my world is when I wake up in the morning, I'm, I'm in pain. I have seven herniated discs in my neck and that's no picnic. And so sometimes I'll wake up in pain. So the first thing I do is I grab a sublingual, I have sublingual drops on my nightstand and I'll take some of those because it takes about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes for it to work, but it'll work for four to six hours for me. So it carries me through the morning, but I don't want to be in pain for the next 30 minutes. So right next to my sublingual drops is a vape pen and I take a good hit off the about vape that. pen. <laughs> and literally within a minute, a month, You're it, good. Like somebody takes a rag and wipes the pain off my back. And I tell you, the first time that happened, I was shocked. Told my wife, this is crazy. And even when I did it this morning, every day, and I've done it for now over five years, um, it just it just shocks me how fast that works. You, it, it works. You're up, motivated, ready to go and conquer the day, which um, I actually do the same thing, Mark. So um, uh, this is one of our uh, sublingual products by mm -hmm. one of our companies, Momenta. Um, so this is actually our sublingual RSO. Mm -hmm. So this is a very uh, light product as a sublingual product, but um, it's a wonderful um, product for um, those morning times. So morning time, sometimes I'll get up and it's just like, okay, like you need to get out of bed. You need to move around, you know, get up is because I get up very early, but um, utilizing this sativa um, one that we have um, is perfect for the morning times. It gets me up motivated but you also going. have but you also have an rso that's uh i one here that's that's uh an indica yes yes i actually have that one in my hand but yes yes correct so yeah. we have uh indica hybrid and sativa which we didn't go over hybrid just yet but hybrid is actually that middle ground everyone um so um hybrid can be either uh sativa or indica leaning so um but indica like we said indica in the couch and we do it just like a traffic light so you know to kind of stop if you see red and it's going to put you to sleep but um these products Some, are yeah sublingual is also uh, go right like you're taking the drops they go and you put it in your mouth and it gets absorbed into the mucus membrane inside right. your mouth that goes directly into your bloodstream Correct. and that that and so you feel the effects much much quicker like i say within 15 in my case about 20 to 25 minutes uh, typically no more than about 30 minutes but it lasts in my case it lasts about six hours which is great it takes me through the morning um, i have a condition that um, i've got to take something in the morning i got to take something in the afternoon i got to take something in the evening if i don't take it my neck taps my shoulder and says cowboy do something because pretty quick you're going to feel it and uh and i if i even if i take a day or a day and a half off or two days off um, I, that's about all I can do. I'm not addicted to cannabis. I'm addicted to getting rid of the pain. And I'm addicted Correct. to getting rid of the pain without all the negative side effects that I get from all the pharma drugs that are out there. Um, that. it, it's something that's there. So this is where the sublingual differs from oral. One's absorbed in your stomach, one's, one goes into the mucous membrane. What's really nice is topicals. And you guys have a great topical, which you can put on that really helps quite a bit, which is your, your gel that, that people put on. Correct. So we have a 250 milligram um, topical uh, gel um, that straight THC is going to be within that hybrid line or we have a one-to-one uh, -one topical and then we have a CBD topical by itself as well so patients right. have the choice of three different ones but that actually is going to be within the immediate category also so um, what I like to do with that is place it on the direct location of my pain and kind of leave it on just a little bit wet so it absorbs into my skin. But before I know it, the pain is gone um, for me personally. But um, uh, topicals and creams are great. Um, I actually broke my foot about, it was about two years ago now, and I tremendously used those after my surgery um, on top of my foot because it was just like... Um, as you stated before, also, they'll give you Percocets and different things of that nature, which we don't want to take that stuff. Yeah. Um, so naturally healed with that. And um, yeah, they're just phenomenal. But um, again, I mean, your topical is also what they call transdermal, which means it goes right through the, the, the skin layer right into your bloodstream. A lot of topicals that you'll find don't do that. Um, but your are being transdermal really helps really helps quite a bit and really makes it very effective. I'm going to go to a question right now while we're on the subject. Marsha asked a question, which is a great question. Where can I find tinctures with myrcene? And are products, are, are there products with lower THC? You know, I don't want to be uh, sleepy, but I don't want, you know, but I, 
but I want to take something at bedtime. Um, the answer is almost every product has terp has myrcene in it. But um, Randy, you, you guys have a few what they call ratio products where you can go very high CBD and low THC, right? Yes. So we have a couple different ratio products. We have a one-to-one, -one, um, which I would say this, it depends on each person, but a um, one-to-one, um, uh, we have a one-to-eight. Um, in our nano line, we have an eight-to-one. Um, we have well, a, let, Let's clarify that. When the first one you say one-to-eight and eight-to-one, the first one is the amount of CBD. Correct, correct. The second so, one is the amount of THC. When somebody says one-to-eight, that's one CBD to eight THC. When I say eight-to-one, it's eight CBD to one THC. So I just want to clarify for people that are, that are tuning in here. That's we, we, we in the industry tend to throw those numbers around and I want to translate for some folks. But yeah, you guys have you have it going like both ways. And that's where ratio products, Marcia, that's where ratio products come into play because you can get yourself a high CBD product with low THC and they all have mercine in them. And in fact, mercine is pretty common in almost every product. I don't really know of a product that doesn't have mercine in it. Do you, Randy? Not really. It's going to be hard to find. That's, that's going to be hard to find unless you have some specifically. <laughs> some specifically engineered products that are, Correct. Really, they're really, they're really out there. So I just thought, you know, that's hopefully that answers your question. And I would go in and I would ask for a high, a high ratio, like an eight to one, eight CBD to one THC or four to one, two to one. I found a really good two to one gummy, believe it or not. That's great. Two, two CBD to one THC. I ran into one of those and I, that's, that's been kind of one of my go-tos uh, when I do martial arts. It helps me quite a bit because I have to worry about inflammation uh, after that particular area that's there. That, Some that's of our it. products also um, on the label, we have another company called, um, we work with called Sunshine Cannabis. Most of their um, vape carts or their products are going to be ratio. I mean, it actually okay. says it on there, but it's just not full-blown um, out there in a way like that but, um right. but it is a wonderful product but um sometimes you'll find a 20 to 1 or vice versa but um just look on the packaging and um yeah you'll see um that being a ratio but we have a slew of products that truly need to, for you to be able to select from yeah and i think that you're answering alina alina's uh, alina i hope lena who i hope i pronounced that correctly you're asking which products do do i use for cervical pain of a vape pen uh, i have cervical and lumbar spine issues um, I think using the, um, using the vape pens, using the, the ones you're talking about, the sunshine products will help quite a bit. Definitely. Um, that, or even some topical also as well, but, um, for that pain immediately, yes, definitely vape cards, I would say. Right. Um, yeah. Now, one of the other questions is, does, uh, does, um, uh, truly momenta RSO indica, uh, that is uh, contain good sleep terpenes. Uh, you will be able to see the terpenes uh, on our website. I don't have one of our C COAs directly with me, but um, if you go purchase the product or just stop by the store and ask for the COA, somebody should be able to provide it for you. Right, and I have looked at I have looked at that COA, and it does have a number of terpenes in it that will help you with sleep uh, that are there. Anytime you're using a full full. Um, a full plant product really helps quite a bit. And I know we're, we're now answering a lot of the questions that are here, which, which is out there, which I'm trying to, you know, hopefully do that. One last question before we leave this, and I guess it gets into the true leaf part of it. Um, how is cannabis regulated to give the same effect each time? And that's a good question because we're dealing with biologics. We're dealing with biology, we're dealing with plants, even though the plants are the same, you know, roses are roses, they're still a little bit different. But I think you guys have done a good job at, at, at truly, even the, when you breed these things, to have them be able to have very similar kind of characteristics, right? Correct. So uh, we try to hit on the same terpene profile. Uh, it, it's all in genetics, but we try to hit on the same, uh, like I said, once again, terpene profile of the product that you're purchasing. Mm -hmm. Um, to have that particular effect, but everybody's body's different, Susan. So um, it depends on really you. It sometimes you can utilize too much of something, and you have to swap to something else in order to get back regulated. But um, yeah, uh, and, I, and I show this slide here because your 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 stores are much like uh, Chico stores. They're much like Apple stores. They're Apple. they're not they're not head shops. That's for sure. No, and I, definitely. And I, 
want to throw this slide up because we talked about the routes of administration and, and here you are. Here's the products that you have that match that. Here's your, your you got some pretty cool edibles on top. These are your, your, your edibles that are here. Again, oh, yeah. be very careful of edibles, okay? About the time you think they're not working is about the time they start working. They kick in. <laughs> <laughs> always the same stories of gee i i took a little bit of it and thought they weren't work. working more of it, I took more of it you know <laughs> i have a i have a mother who um because she was suffering from uh, breast cancer we got her some 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 edibles and she's actually an edible fan now but initially she's a good portuguese italian mother who has the um, patience of a gnat um, oh she knows what she's doing oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, that's uh, why i she takes, she, she, we told her a quarter of this little piece of chocolate and she didn't work thing. after 15 minutes. So <laughs> she continued to take the whole thing, which of course an hour later, um, my, my brother said, mom's baked. And he was like, mom, what did you do? You know, it's what I we told you. But that's the parent nature comes in them. So they, they know best, you know, but um, that's why we always say start low and go slow. We have a slew of different edibles, but um, with that chocolate bar there um, is a good example. Um, there is uh, score marks on there. So each one of those lines is right going to be 10 milligrams. Right um, and you can actually cut that in half then cut that in half to have a macro or micro dose. I'm sorry, micro or macro dose. I like the macro dose sometimes just to kind of almost feel the feeling, but not feel it. And I like the micro dose. In fact, um, all least, of your products you can cut in half. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You, you, um, you, 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 everything, your, your gels, everything. Yep, yeah, yeah. And I recommend when you're getting into, uh, especially when you're first starting with cannabis and edibles, cut them in half, okay? Um, because they... They can sneak up on, give them an hour or two. They'll work. Trust me. Have, be cool. Have faith. Yep. Okay, they'll yep. work. Okay. Because, um, the, the, and the other side of it is, you know, you're still going to be alive. Like you said, Randy, I, I took a little bit too much, but I'm, I'm alive. I'm well the next day. And, and candidly, there's no hangover. That's one thing I love about cannabis is um, the fact that you, there's no deaths on record. I don't think we right. said that tonight. There is no deaths on record from this. Right. Um, it's a very safe product. Right. Um, can't say more than enough good things about it, but um, going back just a little bit, um, as you see there, that's uh, one of our topicals, I'm sorry, tr um, sublinguals, um, oral sublinguals are one to eight there. Um, yeah. That's going to be one of and our- One normal. CBD to eight C T T, right? Correct. Correct. So that's that ratio he was speaking of. Our ratios are actually going to be blue within the side of the store. So um, if you look for ratios, um, they're easily identified by um, their color. So right here, right there. Yep. So and then your um, yellows are your hybrids, like your uh, like this is a, a case of your your topical. Correct. Correct. So um, as I was saying before, we do it just like a traffic light. So um, just like traffic light, you can either slow down or stop for that traffic light, depending on how long ago that yellow light turned yellow so if it just turned yellow you could probably keep going meaning it's a sativa lean hybrid or if it's been yellow for about five seconds you're now almost getting up to the line you better stop right so think about it like that um it's gonna be an indica lean hybrid so um but um there's a slew of different products that we have um at our store um, here you go here. here here's an example right here here's you have your nanotechnology which we talked about being able to um, using what they call sonification, it helps you get in this bioavailability, it lets you get right into the bloodstream. But also, you take a look at it, you have your eight to one, one to eight, right? Correct. And, and then works. you have your CBD to THCs, and also, you know, the other, the, 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 turning it around. But you also have your gels, which is great. Correct. And the gels are actually one of my favorite ones um, because uh, I've been a patient for a while, but. Um, our nano gels work very well for me. I'm not saying that for, um, I'm only speaking for myself, but um, I always say start low and go slow. Um, cut those in half. I actually cut those in half myself from actually being a patient over four years. So um, you do get 10 pieces. They do come in indica sativa and hybrid and start at $25 and then um, go up from there. But um we have a wide selection of things for you to choose from. Also, if um, I think we're actually going to get to that, but yeah, now, that I'm going to go it. back to Susan's question about how do you know, how can you regulate it to give the same effect? This is where, when you're looking at a product like truly just putting together eight to one, one to eight or ratio product or any product, this has to do with the quality of testing and it has to do with, with the, the genetics of how they're, they're making the product. 
Um, they, they do a very good job of trying to trying to basically have each batch be as close to the original as possible. They're never going to get it 100% dead on, but the variance right now is so small or so slight that they're pretty much pretty close to being the same that, that's out there with everything that's there. Correct. That, that's there. Now, you also have ratioed products. We talked about that. And this is what I think is great. Now, my only complaint about the ratio products is you got some pretty cool products like CBD to CBN. Man, you can't find it in one of your stores. When that product hits the shelf, it is gone. It's gone. It's yep. Gone. <laughs> it does fly off the shelves. So right. um, that goes back to sleep. People are having trouble sleeping at night. But CBD right. and CBN is a wonderful combination because you get the sedative effects um, of CBD, but topped off with CBN, um, oh, pure bliss, I, I, I say in my eyes, but um, we have a slew of ratio products. So we have uh, ratio true pods, vape cards, true gels, capsules, and true clear. Um, true clear, we really didn't talk about that tonight, but true right clear here. is going to be our, um, con it's going to be another concentrate, but um, it's going to be really thick, kind of like the old school orange juice concentrates back in the day. So a lot can go, I'm sorry, a little can go a long way. So um, definitely be careful um, when utilizing that particular product. Um, right. Just take a, a little small amount goes a long ways. I do want to point out one product that I think is important. You do have a vape cartridge that is, um, it, it's, it's, um, it's got uh, it's called live rose rosin, and that should be actually R O S E N or Michigan N on it. And that rosin oh, is yes. very high in terpenes and very high in flavonoids, and I think it's great. I think that's part of that uh, sunshine product line. That you that's have. actually Blue River. So we have River. Um, yep Blue River terpenes. Um, um, they're known for actually they're known for their terpenes, but Blue River is the company. Um, we have half gram um, live rosin carts. Um, they actually come in indica sativa and hybrid when we do have them, but they do fly off the shelf as well. Um, it's basically, my mouth is actually watering right now. It's basically the plant with inside of a cartridge in a way. And the taste is so just immaculate, but um, the effects are, um, you can feel the effects on the onset is very quick as well. So um, I would say death. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely be careful with it, but um, don't just start chugging on and just think, Hey, this is another vape card. It's not another vape card. <laughs> so, but let's cut to the chase. What everybody really loves is discounts. Oh, and yeah. What I love about the truly is you guys have some great discounts. Oh yeah. We actually changed some of these discount table in here. We could spend all night talking about your discounts. Oh yeah, we definitely could, but I'm, 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 I'll go over it quickly. Uh, we actually changed uh, one of our discounts, which I'm going to touch on our senior discount. Um, it was on Sundays, but we actually do senior discounts every single day now. Oh, so wow. seniors get 10% off. As a senior off. citizen, I'm going to say thank you very much. Yes, you're very welcome. I'm very uh, happy to be of assistance. That's why I love, love this. But uh, yes, you're gonna, you get a discount every single day um besides that when you first come and see us you get 50 percent off um just for coming to see us off of your first purchase um your second purchase you get 15 percent off and then um, when you renew your card with the state that's when that um uh expiration date on your card expires the actual physical card expires and you renew it with the state we're going to give you 75 dollars off of 150 so we basically give you medication back um uh, once you reach that point we also give you a birthday discount as well as um, um, we deliver. Uh, now, your delivery is great because it, for, you deliver anywhere in the state for $15, which is the cheapest that's out there. But more or, importantly, if you're a senior citizen over the age of 65, you, you deliver. And I think that's great. Free. Yep, um, absolutely. But you're missing one of the, you're missing one of, and I think I wanted, I don't want to take the attention off of that, which I think is great. But the big, reason one of the things you do great better than anybody else is your return and exchange policy oh yeah if it doesn't work you can bring it back and you can exchange it and i, I don't know of any other dispensary that does that and you know if you even if you use half the bottle um, if it's not working bring it back uh true i truly will exchange it i i tried a product that i did try about half the bottle it just wasn't working i went back and talked to it they, we talked about what to use. We exchanged it for a product that did work, and it, it made my life much better. And again, as someone who's always priced, always worried about spending too much money, this helps you be able to, to, to stay within budget when you're dealing with cannabis. 
Definitely. And this is a program that is still fairly new in the state of Florida. So we understand that you have to try certain things um, mm-hmm. in order to see if they're going to work for you and right. um, get your lifestyle back um, to where it needs to be at. So um, like Mark said, we have a, a hassle-free 100% return policy. And we will ask you a few questions to kind of see what's going on, but also um, find something that does work for you so you're not tied to a product. Uh, one thing that is not on here also, um, we have um, devices. I haven't gone over devices tonight. So we have medical devices. Each one of those have lifetime warranties. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, for those vape carts or um, true pods, you actually need a battery to go with that. Um, that's known as a medical device. Each one of those have a lifetime warranty. But um, going to deliveries, uh, we have a delivery and or pickup system. Um, as Mark stated, um, any patient that's 65 or older is free delivery. Um, every other patient is just going to be $15. Um we also have a uh, Waitly app. So you can actually order online before you get to the store. And once your order has been um, completed online by you, you're going to receive a text message and you're able to click, click on the Waitly app and either place yourself in line to um, be on the way to the store or um, see how long the what wait I, is. What I've used that for is with, if I'm, if, let's say I'm driving somewhere and I know I'm going to buy a True Leaf store, I can actually place an order. And then when I'm on the road, just hit that app and I just walk in, get my product and walk out. I think that, that that's great. My compliments to you. Um, Quick and easy. Yeah. Now we, we have questions here and I'm going to give you a couple of questions. I know that Anonymous had a great question. It says, I found the COA from Momenta RSO Indica. And unless I missed it, I don't see any terpenes listed. So Randy, here's what I'm going to suggest we do. Uh, I know you want to remain anonymous, but Randy, um, will you put your email address in the chat? And anonymous, if you want to remain anonymous, send uh, send me your email address. And what I will do is, or Randy, your email address. Randy, why don't you look into that? And once you find those in, in the, in, find those terpenes and send that out to them, okay? I can do that because I know they're there. It's, it's but reading those COAs is a bit magic. I mean, I, I understand what you're going through. Seven pages of, of of reports. It's not they don't just pop out and say here here's where it is. So I think, Randy, I'm going, to, I'm going to defer that because that's one of those things I think we answered by just actually looking at the piece of paper and seeing what's there. Correct. Right. So if you could help us out by doing that, Randy, put your uh, email address in the, in the, in the chat, and, and hopefully we'll be able to get that taken care of. Um, and I think we have all the questions answered. Is that right? Uh, I believe that is correct. Okay. So what I do want to point out, we're going to wrap up this webinar because we've been at this for almost uh, an hour and 50 minutes. If you're looking at getting, where do you get your cannabis from? True Leaf. I would recommend you have plenty of stores throughout the state and you're opening more. Of, I, 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 hard, it's hard to keep up with you all because you're opening so many stores, but there's going to be one hopefully near you. And as mentioned, they'll, re, they'll deliver it anywhere in the state for $15. So take advantage of it. Where do I get a card? I'm thinking about getting into medical marijuana. My recommendation is MMTC of Florida. Um, go to that website, uh, use the coupon code MMW10, and you'll be able to get a 10% discount if you go to them. Uh, I'll put that discount code up in just a moment. Uh, it'll help you be able to get the discounts for them. Reason I use them is because not only do they help you get the card, they also have dosing support. And without dosing, this whole thing doesn't work. And it's the only doctor's group that I know that does dosing support. And then going back to that whole CBD product, Randy, you guys sell products, but you have a lot of ter- ter- uh, THC in it. If you're looking at a hemp-based product that you want to have a good CBD product, the full spectrum or broad spectrum, I created a, 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 a I created work, work with a group to create My Botanical Wellness, where we actually had physicians look at the actual cannabis, the hemp products that are out there, and we'll provide you products that we know are doctor recommended. Um, the physician recommended hemp products. We, we feature the SunMed products which are, I think, top of the food chain in the hemp business. And so you know you're buying something safe. It's not a gas station alternative. And we do have COAs for every one of our products that are out there. So as a little bit of a follow-up, hopefully this, this helps quite a bit. And as I mentioned, we have discount codes uh, that applies to MMTC and to My Botanical Wellness. May not apply to, uh, truly, if you guys you have, you have your own discounts, man, I don't let you go into your, your world. But for the other two, we have the discounts that are here, that are there. So last and not least, I do want to mention the whole thing works around dosing. And I view dosing very much like learning about alcohol or caffeine. 
go low and go slow. You know, you need to find out at what point do you begin to feel a little bit high, at one point you begin to feel uncomfortable, then back down, then increase the amount of CBD that's there. A lot of people use more CBD than THC. My wife uses a ratio that's 12 to 1. Um, uh, I tend to be more four, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, uh, maybe 1 to 1, okay, that's out there. But it, everybody is different that it's out there. But really, it's pay attention to being able to find your sweet spot and being able to go forward that, that's out there. Um, bottom line, Randy, is what? You're not going to die. You mentioned it. You're, nobody has ever died from either using cannabis for recreational purposes or medical purposes. And I think that's really, really effective. More it's people have died from peanuts and water than anybody from cannabis. Right. I mean, I find it just absolutely amazing. More people have died from peanuts than have died from cannabis, which is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, but it's still safer. legal, though. You know, cannabis, cannabis is, still... is safer than McDonald's. You know, yeah, it is. It really is. But hey, it's still federally, you know, legal though. So I'm just just saying, you know, something wrong there. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, you're not, you're not going to get addicted, right? No. No, definitely won't get addicted. Um, um, you could be addicted to how Mark stated, um, getting rid of your pain. Um, but uh, there's no overdoses. If you feel as if you've overdosed, you probably just took a little bit too much and possibly need to eat something. Uh, that's another way of um, um, getting those effects dimmed down just a tad bit. But they, uh, there is a psychological addictive profile to it, though. Yeah, that's a good keep point. In mind, it's not physical addiction, but there, there are other forms of addiction, and cannabis is in that group. That does that, that, that's true, and and I will tell you that again, for pain relief, um, I, I am addicted to cannabis to get rid of my pain relief. It, it it's it, it is psychological, but it is physical, but also puts me in a. But that that's the whole idea of insomnia. You know, do you want to perpetuate those things that form a, a chronic insomnia? If it's transient, transient use of the products, to me, absolutely. If you feel like once or twice a week, uh, I've got like problems of getting to sleep and I know I'm going to have trouble or I've got something where I have to be on top of it tomorrow. I want to make sure I get some good sleep. Perfect. But, you know, if if there's chronic pain involved, absolutely. Every night, if you need to, it's much safer than the benzodiazepines, the Valium class of medicines to where, you know, that thing, if you that has a physical addiction, if you stop taking it, you could have seizures. So definitely safer, but still watch what you're, you're doing. And, and I'm glad that it's a medicinal and it is prescribed by a physician. So all of that part's all right. But keep in mind, you know, it's like um, how bad is bad when you're talking about insomnia. Sure, sure. So, um, so let me, uh, let me, uh, we're gonna do a little wrap up here. Um, uh, 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 Alina, you asked about my email address. I just put it in the chat. You can either use event or events at Marijuana Aware to reach me directly. Uh, and I think, Marsha, you asked, we're, hopefully we answered your question. Go into True Leave, get a, talk to them about getting consultation, and they'll walk you through the ratio of products and answer your question about finding low THC and, and f mercine in them. You know, help quite a bit. So, uh, Greg, I know you're, you're probably driving home, and thank you very much for hanging in there. Give us your final thoughts on tonight. Well, one big thing is that um, THC resembles the tricyclic amines, and that's the uh, antidepressant molecules. Uh, we used to use protriptyline or bivactyl in sleep medicine to suppress REM sleep, to suppress some forms of REM sleep apnea where people stop breathing in dream sleep. So sometimes you could be using cannabis uh, heavy, heavy users may not dream or re recall any dreams at all. And when they stop, sometimes you have what's called REM rebound. So everybody think about it as like, no, you, are you dreaming? And if you are, and they're all pleasant, nice dreams, fabulous. But sometimes dreams can take a turn uh, depending on what uh, underlying sleep disorder may be causing the problems. And I've seen that a lot of times. So um, Find out if you're sleeping okay. Ask yourself if you remember dreams and, and then, you know, decide whether or not to continue on with uh, cannabis type products or just, you know, slow down a little bit. Some of these recreational users are pretty heavy users that right. need to slow down. Right, right. Just step back a little bit. You'll be amazed how, how it helps quite a bit. 
But Greg, thank you very much, for example, for being on tonight. We really think that we really appreciate it. Um, Before I get to you, Randy, I do want to thank everybody for basically hanging in there for almost two hours. Thank you. We hopefully, hopefully we provided you information that will help you not only improve your life, help improve your sleep, but help you get your life back. And that's really our objective. And we thank you very much for tuning in. Um, And then next week we have another webinar uh, that's going to be on routes of administration. But Randy, um, give me your final thoughts. I think you both said it uh, clear enough. Um, if you're having sleeping issues, make sure you um, get your medical cannabis card and uh, stop one of your, buy one of your local True Leaves and um, come talk to us. Um, right. We're more than we're we're not scary people, so we're more than happy to have a conversation with you. We have private rooms where we can actually sit you down and um, have a one-on-one with nobody else listening. So um, come to us, ask us questions. You don't, need, you, you don't even have to have, be a patient or um, have your car to do a virtual or in-person consultation. So um, if you're on the line or on the fence about getting it or um, utilizing these products, just take a consultation and ask all the questions you would like. Great. Well, Randy, thank you and truly for the sponsorship. We really do appreciate it. Greg, thank you very much for your sage words. Um, as always, it's really helped quite a bit, um, and uh, and it's out there. I want to thank everybody who's still online. We really do appreciate it. As I mentioned, you're going to be getting an email uh, that will have a link to the video of this particular webinar, the presentation, the resources, the discounts that'll be able to help you quite a bit. And again, thank you very much. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about routes of administration, and so please join us for that. It's very fascinating. Um, we're going to get dive down into not only what's what to use, but how to use it. I think that's very, very important that's out there. And again, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Please be safe. And uh, hopefully you had a great uh, Memorial Day weekend. I want to just take a quick shout out uh, for all those veterans um, that have given the ultimate sacrifice. And more importantly, for the, the veterans that have been wounded. Um, I deal a lot of it. I have some I have a couple of people that I've dealt with. Um, one of them is quadriplegic from the Gulf War. And um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for what they did and what they're going through today for us. And I want to say thank you to them. And I think it's important to be able to, to recognize what, what they're particularly doing. It's up there. Um, and again, I want everybody to please stay safe and just have a great weekend. And hopefully we'll see you all next week. And to finish off, we have a couple of commentators you've seen in the background, Lee and, and uh, Leah. Um, without them, this whole thing doesn't work. And uh, it may seem like we're in smooth, but they're the ones that keep it that way. And I want to give a live final shout out to um, Alyssa Katera. She's the one who came up with the idea in the, these webinars. Alyssa, thank you very much for the idea. Everyone, thank you very much. Have a great evening. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye now.